you know, I'm not a cockeyed optimist. But then again, I'm not really a pessimist either. I'm not a realist and I'm not an idealist. Although, ist might fit, but whatever that may be, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Because you always add the ist at the end of something, you know, to make it you, as far as being a person, you know, like humanist, but, or spiritualist, or Bibleist. But the point being is that it's okay if you are a pessimist, as long as you're not always pessimistic. It's okay if you're an optimist, as long as you're not always optimistic. You see, Sometimes people get excessive to the point of obsessive about what they're excessive about. Meaning that they go over the top or way down the road thinking that that somehow being zealot or being zealous for what they are or what they believe in is the right way to be. That's not always true because God says his scales are a just balance. We're told to examine the scriptures from cover to cover. God doesn't want us always on an upper because it's usually going to be a false feeling that's leading us because life isn't always an upper experience. God doesn't want us always on a downer, you know. Quite frankly, life isn't always a downer experience. You can always find something to rejoice in, whether it be the trials and tribulations you're going through or just simply life itself. You can look outside today where I live and see spring is in the air. It is so obvious that everyone I'm sure is going to run out and go for a walk or put on a t-shirt or you know put on their shorts and go catch some rays you know somewhere because it's going to be in the 70s. Matter of fact might even get 73 or 4 or something. But plants in their season respond to different things in their time. Some are even on a certain timing that they'll bloom in a certain season. They'll put forth their blossoms at the right time in the right place. My bulbs that I saved from last year are growing. I'm so surprised I even put them out front now. They're hanging on the back side of this little white wall you can see here so the public can see it. But my bulbs I took out of my last year's plantings on you know little containers that I have all around me. and they had multiplied so I saved them and my wife put them in a paper you know and and you know just a dry box and some paper and saved them for this year and they started growing before we put them in the dirt that was amazing to me their timing told them it was time to grow and they started growing because they had stored up that which they needed God has his timing and place and purpose for every single purpose every single person every single person under the sun he uses that opportunity that we present in our choices to direct us in a direction that we should go. doesn't mean we will go, but we should go. And we often find ourselves when we arrive at our destination that God had already prepared it for us. That's kind of like what it is to be not necessarily always so wrapped up in what you think you are as opposed to what God allows you to be today as you find yourself, whether it be an optimist or a pessimist. You can enjoy the day no matter which way you find yourself, whether it be for good news or bad news. I personally don't like someone who's always sharing bad news. I mean, they're always telling me what's wrong with the world. I usually stop them sooner or later and after about four or five sentences, as a matter of fact, and I'll say, can you tell me one thing that's right with the world? In other words, you know, if you're so focused in on what you think is wrong, you may miss what's right. And the same thing is true is you may think that everything's so right with the world, you may miss what's really wrong. <laughs> Believe me, there's a lot of people out there like that because they get into this kind of like profess it, confess it, you know, they always have to say something positive rather than being realist or being honest. Jesus spoke the truth in love. He spoke bluntly where people were at and though they may have been offended at times, they challenged by his words, he still did not offend them to the point of breaking them or stomping them or chomping on them, really. They could handle it. Because it says that in the scriptures that he didn't even 
bruise a vent reed or you know how the scripture goes you know you didn't a smoking flax he didn't quench and a bruised reed he did not break you know and it was that kind of person that was able to quite frankly speak to the circumstances every time that he found himself in them directly to what the issue was explicit about what the word was and directional about what should be done in every single circumstance that he lived in but there's a reason why it's because he said during those three and a half years that we have recorded he saw what his father was doing he heard from his father every day and he did those things that were pleasing in his father's sight he checked in in order to check out his life with God because he was and lived an example of heaven on earth he was the example of God with us and even as we should be examples of the kingdom of heaven come to earth as the gospel going forth into the world itself though we should be perfect examples we're just simply imitations of Christ we're imi poor imitations of seeing through a glass darkly but then one day we will see him face to face so if you find yourself as a pessimist be a pessimist but don't always be a pessimist if you find yourself as an optimist be an optimist but don't always be an optimist if you find yourself you know needing to find find some reason you know to just enjoy God well at times enjoy God but then also be sorrowful it's okay in other words a lot of what you go through in the seasons of life whether they be age seasons or yearly seasons meaning annuals or perennial seasons you know temporary or whatever it may be recognize that God is the one who has brought it to you and your response to him is what you determine by your faith seek beauty draw beauty from every flower and joy from the song of the birds and the color of the flowers I am with you when I wanted to express a beautiful thought I made a flower a lovely flower when I wanted to express to man what I am what my father is I strive to make a beautiful character I use you and I use those around you think of yourselves as my expression of my attributes as a lovely flower is my expression of thought and you will strive in all your spiritual beauty and thought and power and health and clothing to be as fit as an expression of me as you can think of you being my expression of faith in this world have faith in me absorb beauty recognize what I have done and not what man has done as soon as the beauty of a flower or a tree is impressed upon your soul it leaves an image there which reflects through your actions you stop and smell the roses you look and observe the color you're aware of the texture often people I know and I've been one of them when they're near death's door when they're aware or been told that they're going to die and they know it they suddenly have this heightened experience of sensory perception all of their senses are acutely enhanced to a degree where they can suddenly appreciate even the shiny little coat on these flowers you know the little you can't see it real well in the without the sunlight but the little fuzzies little tiny hairs kinda you could call it peach fuzz on the plant most people when they're in a hurry they see a green plant but you see I can see the green plants that are around me and I see a little red band around the edges where the sun has tainted them or I see a little inner band of darker almost magenta kind of red that you know the the flower has been coated with whatever type of chlorophyll that it needed in order to absorb the sun's rays because it's in direct sunlight and I notice all the different textures and it's not because I'm an artist or I'm a writer but because at some point in time I was aware of that and I made it a part of my life that when I almost died and I could smell everything see everything and experience everything more acutely it was like being born again again because when I was first born again that's what happened to me 
boy, my eyes were opened in a way I had never seen before, and so were my ears, as well as my awareness of spiritual matters. And I know not everyone has that kind of direct, emotional, complete change, but hey, <laughs> what do you expect from a kid that grew up on sci-fi? <laughs> and it wasn't me imagining it, believe me. That was amazing. But the point is, being that acutely aware of the beauty of creation, of that with which my Father has made from heaven of this earth, and then even though it's been under a curse, I can still see the handiwork that God has made. Even as though you may be under a curse, I can still see the handiwork of what God has done in your life. A lot of people like to say, well, you know, you know you're know, you just a sinner. You know, you know, blah, 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 blah. And you know, they'll tell you all about your sin. I'd rather tell you about your destiny, you know, and how beautiful you're becoming, how you're evolving, so to speak, as a beautiful rose that's just unfolding its petals to the sun and following the sunlight wherever it goes. You know, I have a bean plant that just grew. My wife planted some beans, you know, green beans, you know, Mr. Green Beans, or is that Mr. Green Shorts? I don't know, something from somewhere back in my memory. But we have these green beans that we planted, you know, that they were like this, and then a few days they grew like this, and now they grew like this. They're about this tall. And the funny thing is, I put them in my living room. And my living room is here, and the sun's over here. So they bent that way. So then I turned them around, and within an hour, they bent that way. Turned them around again, they bent over again. Every hour, I kept turning them around because they kept growing taller and bending towards the light. They were that flexible. Often, we need to learn to be that kind of flexibility, to turn to the light and follow it whithersoever it goes. Because Jesus said, He was the light. He is the way. He is the truth. We should not be so structured sometimes that we don't yield ourselves to the moving of the Spirit of God as He chooses to move us and direct us. That's the kind of yielded life that God wants us to have. That's the beauty that creation teaches us. And we're told that all of creation reveals the glory of God. It reveals the nature of God. It reveals even teachings from God. Just like my beans. I know that as a gardener, I can learn the entire Bible quite frankly, from what I grow. And I've done it. I've taught it in video lots of times. If you work in a garden very long and get your hands dirty, you'll figure out that you know there's a lot about the Bible in gardening. And it seems to fit pretty well. It seems to be pretty accurate. Maybe God knew what he was doing when he created us and placed us in the world, but not of the world. Look for beauty and joy in the world around you. Look at the flower until its beauty becomes a very part of your inner soul. It will be given back to the world again by you in the form of a smile or a loving word if you are inspired by that which I intended that flower to be when you see it. Listen to a bird. Have you ever heard a bird sing your name? Have you ever seen a song with the glory of God revealed in it? Listen to a turtle bell in the morning. You know, cooing or calling. Listen to the sounds and the song in the night. Or better yet, wake up in the morning and listen to the world as it begins to wake. Not the cars, not the trash man next door, you know, doing the dumpster thing. But rather, listen to the hummingbird wings fluttering as he comes to feed. Or listen to just the yielding of the cold to the warmth of the sun as it stretches wood out and causes it to fluctuate and to bend, even as the water comes out of the wood and it causes it to warp or to bend back and to yield and to kind of move in ways we never would have imagined. Likewise, so too, that's what creation does for us if we allow it to inspire us in our day. You can learn to laugh more and to live in this world even though it's passing away. You can learn to love more and to appreciate that which is around you in the simplest of ways if you just look and see and take the time to recognize where it came from 
and who it is that designed it for you. Whether you're downtown in the middle of the city, like I am, I'm not downtown, but I'm close enough, but you understand what I mean if you're in the urban areas and you're downtown, you know you can go to a park somewhere and check out the flowers. You can go somewhere and see creation growing rather than man-made knowing. You know, because man-made knowing always thinks he knows what's best for man and really seems to make a mess of it. But God showing always seems to reveal himself in creation. And in his... There goes man-made knowing, you know. One thing about technology, they've never figured out trash. You see, one of the problems about our industrialization is we didn't look at the long term. The long term is we'll cover the world with trash <laughs> sooner or later, and then we'll be building upon top of trash, you know, and then we'll just have compacted trash, you know, trash, 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 trash. Well, well. <laughs> but the point is, is that God in creation looked at the long term, and the long term was to be a testimony of His nature. So it's really not Mother Nature that we see, but God's nature revealed in all that He's created for us today. Watch for those things today and take the time, really, whether you're a pessimist or optimist, whether you're looking gloriously at the day or ignominiously at the snow you might be in or the struggles you might be going through. Watch for those moments when God reveals himself in something that he brought your way. Maybe it's even a cut flower from a store that you put in your face and you can look over and go, huh, that's kind of pretty. And as you look at it closer, you might see maybe the handprint of God trying to impact your day today.